in the next few moments, we will be moving through an Ignatian contemplation, which is a way of praying with scripture, and that is described in the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Those steps are uh, in the comments of this video. If you would like to pray on your own using a different passage, you can do that. And there's going to be a printable uh, free sheet in the comments of this video. This video is also divided into chapters. There's this introduction, then there's an introduction to prayer, which are the first four steps in that package. And then we'll move through the prayer in the rest uh, in the third chapter. Um, the last note is that you will be seeing me in the past. <laughs> this is a video that I recorded a while back for a group, uh, a smaller group of people, but I just wanted to make it available uh, for your prayer here. So hopefully it's a grace-filled time with the Lord and many blessings. Bye-bye. And just to get us started, I'm going to read the scripture passage that we will be using today. And it is Jesus calming the storm. It says, One day Jesus got into the boat with his disciples and said to them, Let us cross, cross over to the other side of the lake. And so they set forth. And as they sailed, he fell asleep. Then a windstorm swept down on the lake. As a result, the boat was becoming filled with water, and they were in danger. So they went to him and awakened him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he awakened, he rebuked the wind and the turbulent waves. They subside, and there was calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? They were filled with fear and a sense of awe. And they said to one another, Who can be this? Who can this be? He gives orders to the winds and the water, and they obey him. So with this, we take a moment to transition into God's presence. We become aware that God wants to encounter us in this moment. It might be helpful if you want to do that to change your posture a little bit. And we can begin just taking a deep breath and become aware of God's presence. We normally do that in our Catholic tradition as we say in the name of the Father, and this time we really become aware of God the Father who has a plan for the world and for our lives that wants to encounter us in this prayer. And of the Son, we become aware of Jesus, our brother, our Lord and Savior, who encounters us in Scripture, who reveals himself in scripture in the name of the Holy Spirit. And we become aware of the Spirit who inspires us, that lives within us since our baptism. We take a moment to focus on our prayer, on our posture, sorry. We check that our back is straight, as straight as a normal back is with its normal curvature. We put our hands where they feel comfortable. Our feet, we try to plant them on the floor. And we're going to take a deep breath in three seconds. At the count of three, we begin and we take three seconds to fill our lungs. One, two, three, and we go. Three, we hold it and we let go of the air in six seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
Again, in three seconds, we breathe in. Two, three. And we let it go in six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We continue breathing normally. We take a moment to relax our face. We pull all of our muscles in our face together to a center. We do like a racing face. And we feel all the muscles contracting, and then we let go. We feel the difference. We let relax. We try to make a biggest, the biggest smile possible now. All the muscles go to the outside. And on the count of three, we let go. One, two, three. And we relax our face. We're going to do the same with our shoulders. We bring our shoulders together. Put tension there. The count of three, we let go. One, two, and three. They come down. Energically. Second time we bring our shoulders together. One, two, and three. The third time we bring our shoulders together. And one, two, and three. They go down. And we try to continue this pushing and relaxing, tensing, and letting go of all the muscles all the way to our body chest, our back, our stomach, our legs, our calves, those muscles in front of our calves as we lift our tippy toes up and we close our toes as if it was a fist, we let it go, we raise them up and let it go and we remain relaxed. And now we say this prayer that connects us to the principle and foundation of our life, the purpose of our existence, and the purpose of each prayer. Lord, let all my thoughts and action and attitudes may be completely oriented towards your service and praise. Now we focus on our story. Our gospel passage happens in three moments. At first, Jesus is by the beach, perhaps teaching with his disciples. And he asks them to go to the other side The second moment is as they are deep into the sea, they realize that a storm comes. Jesus has gone asleep and a terrible storm hits. And finally, Jesus calms the storms, the storm and asks us about our faith, our trust in Him in the midst of our storms. We take a moment to compose, imagine these three places. We will first imagine that beach by which Jesus was teaching. We try to imagine the earth, the sand. How does it feel like if I pick it up with my hand and let it go? How does the sand feel on my feet? What does the beach look like as the waves come in and out? 
that's the smell of salt in the air, like. What does that smell like? What, what does that feel like in my nostrils? What is that boat where Jesus taught from like? You touch the wood. You see the green around the edges. The white of the salt that's dried up. You see the boat as it is docked. Moving back and forth with the waves in place. We go to the second place. We imagine the sea. First calm and then starting to turn into a troubled sea. A darker sky. The rain begins begins to fall. And little by little everything starts getting agitated. What does that look like? An agitated sea. We see the waves hitting the boat in the middle of this agitated sea. We see the danger. The waves almost about to Turn it over. This is not a calm scene. This is an agitated scene. The boat in danger of coming down, perhaps. And we come to the end. Jesus, after he calms the storm, we see this great calm. The sea, perhaps near the beach again. And now we ask for what we desire, what we would like to get out of this moment of prayer. I think of my own desires, perhaps I say, God, help me trust you in the midst of the storm in my life, in the midst of my anxieties. Help me trust that you are there, even if you seem asleep. Perhaps it is, Lord, help me have more faith. I trust you, help my unbelief. Or I trust you, help me trust in a deeper way in you. Whatever it is, you make your own prayer. And we begin entering scripture. We see that place we imagined. And we imagine Jesus teaching from that boat What was he teaching about? Take a moment to listen. Take a moment to imagine Jesus' eyes as he perhaps looks at me as he's preaching. What does he say as our eyes cross? Take a moment to listen. We 
we see Jesus perhaps wrapping up he says goodbye we see the crowd around us between us and the boat and perhaps we walk towards the boat we overhear Jesus saying to his disciples let us cross over to the other side we see the disciples in action starting to prepare and perhaps we run into one of them he asks us how do we know this guy Jesus how did we end up here Perhaps we get invited. What is that like? How do we get up onto the boat? Who is there? What did this other guys look like? Perhaps we see Jesus and he greets us, gives us a hug, and we sail. And as we move, we start realizing a change. We realize that perhaps we did not do the greatest decision. We did not take the right choice. And there's no other boat. And I start to feel the rain. like many situations sometimes we find ourselves in this one just comes upon us and how do I react when I turn anxious when I become apprehensive how do I react to the people in the boat Perhaps the instructions become a little harsher in preparation for the storm, lower the sails, get the rows out. Do you know how to row here? Maybe you don't, this is how you do it. Perhaps we are faced with a lack of knowledge of the sea or the anxiety of being in this situation. And we see that these disciples that we thought <laughs> were really kind and nice, we find that under pressure, they're also stressed. How do I react in this type of situations? How do I speak? As I get uncomfortable with the rain hitting my face. I see my response. And I think, where is Jesus? Why is he not here? Perhaps we 
perhaps I hear that somebody says, well, we went to sleep before the storm started. And maybe we have this great idea. Let's go wake him up. How do we leave our post? How are others' expectations stuff maybe upset? How are our own desires of pleasing others moved? How do we go reaching for this guy that fell asleep? We knew when he was speaking, we knew who he was, and we think, I just go, I'll just go and talk to him. And as I can, through the slippery floor and the movement that are violent, perhaps I get hit by water, the waves, and as I can, best I can, I reach the back of the boat where the cot is. And perhaps we're surprised that Jesus is still asleep. And perhaps we take a moment to gauge how we feel. Perhaps we wish he had woken up earlier. How do we wake him? What do I say? Do I shake him? Am I yelling? Am I calm? Do I try to be? We see this real man, this startled man this man that is our brother that looks at us and he just wakes up perhaps he he is also a little shake and shook and how does he ask what's happening what do we tell him and how does he move towards the front of the boat. Perhaps also wet, perhaps also struggling to get there. And how does he speak to the wind? And we start to see, to see this transition perhaps it feels like it just happened and all of a sudden it's calm again The clouds dissipate. And Jesus turns around with an understanding smile on his face. And he says, How are you? Where is your faith? Do you trust me? And we let Jesus come closer and we let Jesus embrace us, tell us that we are safe. What might Jesus want to say to us?
take a moment to listen and to speak as we know we are still feel filled with fear and awe what has happened What does Jesus want to speak to in our lives? What storms is Jesus asking us to trust him in? What does he say? It's okay to challenge Jesus. Perhaps you want to question why did he not wake up earlier? <laughs> what does he say? Uh, perhaps you wish there hadn't been a storm. What does he say? let Jesus speak to us we know that he sees our goodness we, he sees our faith the faith that we do have that we woke him that we went looking for him he sees that we see that in his embrace we know is not reproach when he says where is your faith it's more an invitation to go deeper perhaps there's something different in your conversation with Jesus we take a moment to listen We know that there's time to come back to prayer. So we're not going to say goodbye. We begin to say, see you later. As we come out of this moment of prayer, we begin becoming aware of our feet and our body as we say in silence in our heart. Uh, our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We remain in the embrace of God when we remind ourselves that we finish this moment of prayer that we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.